Notice how we say that we're recording and it gets gets oddly silent. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. We'll get started in just a minute. Ms. Cruz, is the waiting room clear? All right. Well, we'll get going. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Russell Gibbs. I'm the principal here at Foothill Technology High School. Welcome. Um, I would like to also introduce the dynamic duo of Foothill Tech. We have our assistant principals, Ms. Katie Tedford and Ms. Stephanie Cruz. And hopefully you'll find the information you're looking for tonight. Um, if by chance, you want a little bit more, we're gonna have a more expanded session on January 27th at six, and we'll have our webinar link on our website and Ms. Kiros from the district will also put that out to everyone as well. So hopefully you'll get a little snippet of what you like tonight and hopefully you'll be back for more later. Um, if I could ask a big favor of everyone, um, if you could, we have multiple sections tonight explaining what's going on in school. If you could hold off your questions for your section, and if you don't happen to see a section for your question, we'll take all of that at the end. Well, we have plenty of time for questions. And for all those uh, just coming in, I am recording the session right now. Just want to let you know. And I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you again for being here. Welcome. Thanks for coming tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started with the with the nuts and bolts of how do you get into Foothill. Um, Foothill and Mound are the only two schools in the district that are pure lottery. What that means is we are not a neighborhood school in any capacity. We don't pull from our neighborhood. Everyone we accept is accepted through the lottery process. And one thing that's important to say about the lottery is that it is a blind lottery. We are not accepting students off of grades. We are accepting them truly randomly. The only criteria for the lottery is that they reside within Ventura Unified's boundary. Um, and that's something to mention. Even if your child attends a Ventura Unified Middle School right now, if they do not reside in the Ventura Unified boundary during the window for school of choice, they are not able to allow uh, to attend Foothill next year. Doesn't matter if they attend a BUSD Middle School, we, you have to live in the boundary to be eligible to apply for our lottery. So um, that's pretty significant. And, you know, people really often ask, what are our odds of getting into Foothill? So what I can do is share with you the general data from years past. This is a very strange year. I can't promise what it will be this year, but in the past for the incoming ninth grade class, there are usually about 600 applicants for 300 positions. So what that means is that there is usually, if, if we're basing the last five years data um, in this conversation, a 50% chance for a freshman to be accepted to Foothill. For the other grades, we don't accept as many students in the other grades because we accept most of them as freshmen and they matriculate through. You don't have to apply every year. So there are fewer spots available at those other grade levels. Um, there are usually 10 to 20 spots at each grade level and anywhere from 80 to 100 applicants at those grade levels. So the odds are better at, at the freshman class, but we as, take as many students as we can accommodate. Um, and, and do our best with that lottery. The lottery will be handled by the school district and, and the district office. So we are not aware of who's on the wait list or what numbers people have. That really is all handled transparently through the district office. Um, folks ask, how will we know if we get in? We will send a letter in the mail, in the USPS mail, and then we will also send an email. And there are actually three letters that we send. Uh, there is one letter that says you are in and you are accepted. And if you receive that letter, um, you will reply to us promptly. We've got about a week timeline to reply to the acceptance letters. And the reason for that is we want to accommodate any families on the waiting list that we can in the event that families choose not to accept the acceptance offer. Um, so if you are accepted, we do need a prompt response so that we can ensure we can accommodate as many families off that wait list as possible. The second letter that is mailed out uh, to families is a letter letting a family know that you are on an active waiting list. It won't include the number, but it will say you are on a waiting list. And sometimes we get through the waiting list, sometimes we don't. The school site actually doesn't make that decision, so it's not Mr. Gibbs. Uh, he will not accept bribes. <laughs> it's really a decision that is made through the school district. Uh, and they look at how much space is available, and they tell Mr. Gibbs, we're sending you 20 more. So the second letter is a, a wait list letter. And the third letter is really a letter where we're trying to, to be as kind and compassionate as possible and say, listen, it's not gonna happen next year. And the reason for that is we want to ensure that if we know your child's at the bottom of the list, that you find a school that is right for them and that you register early and get courses that they need. So those are the three letters. You're in, you're waitlisted, or it's, it's not going to happen next year. 
Um, so those are the things that you, you could receive via email and via USPS mail. Um, twins, we talked about twins in the entry session. If you have two or more children that are multiples, they go in as one number in the lottery. Okay, next slide, please. We talked about this already, but just noting that middle school enrollment does not determine whether or not you can apply for Foothill. What matters is that you reside within the Ventura Unified Boundary. Um, one thing I, get, I forgot to mention on the last slide that I will add here is that um, siblings do receive priority in the lottery process. So for example, if you have a sibling who in the 21-22 school year will be attending Foothill, that does give any other sibling a priority in the lottery. Those students go to the top of the list. So if you have a student who will be a junior next year and a student who will be a freshman next year, uh, excellent family planning, and you the, that student would receive a spot on the list. One caveat to that though, is that they have to apply. If they don't apply, they will not automatically receive a spot on the list. So if you are in that case, please remember to apply so that we can honor that sibling policy that is part of our district. Okay, thank you. All right, so one of the things that you are going to want to know about Foothill is why do you want to come to Foothill? Well, you know what, we have some amazing programs for your students and uh, this is what makes us the magnet school of choice. Uh, we have an amazing health sciences program, um, as you can see a picture right there on the screen with a uh, our students participating in internships and things like that at the end of their time with us at the health science program. Uh, we also have a communications program. Uh, not only that, we have a technology program and uh, we don't, we didn't add on here, but we should, is we have a new up and coming art program uh, called graphics. It's a graphic design and graphic art program that we uh, are starting this year as well. So that's another one of our programs that, that we've got going on at Foothill. Um, the other nice thing about Foothill is it is a small school. Um, compared to the other high schools, we uh, typically only have about a thousand students on our campus. Uh, so divided up amongst the four grade levels, um, you know, it, we do have a nice small school and it's a more intimate setting. And so students and teachers definitely are, are have better interactions uh, when they are at Foothill. So those are some of the key things that make us a special magnet school of choice. Next slide, please. Um, not only do we have these amazing programs, but we also have these teachers that teach in these programs. And uh, I can't say enough about our teachers. Uh, right now, distance learning, not the favorite of anyone. And uh, I can tell you our teachers are going above and beyond and putting in extra time and they are doing everything they possibly can to try and engage and connect with their students, especially during distance learning. Um, our teachers are highly educated. Most um, hold several degrees or post um, baccalaureate degrees. And um, their instructional strategies are just amazing. And the curriculum that they teach uh, is just off the charts. And that's why we are the number one high school in Ventura County for college preparedness. Um, for the class of 2018, uh, our students were prepared at 81.5% to go on to a four-year university if that's what their choice was. Uh, and for the class of 2019, I believe it was pretty close to being almost about the same. So it's definitely one of the, uh, the highlights of our school and it speaks volumes to the teachers and their ability to prepare students for the next level beyond uh, high school. Next slide, please, sir. Um, and again, one of the things to help prepare students for college or life after high school, um, our courses are taught all at the college prep honors or advanced placement level. Uh, advanced placement is typically uh, grades 10 through 12. Um, and the unique thing about Foothill is we are on a block schedule. So uh, typically our students go to all of their classes on Mondays. And then for Tuesdays through Fridays, our students are um, in their block schedules where they are in each of their periods for 90 minutes. So instead of having six classes a day, they will only have three classes a day or possibly four. And But they are in class for 90 minutes. So definitely allows for, uh, you know, different instructional strategies, more in-depth study uh, when they're in those classes. Um, man, for our lab sciences and things like that, I know those teachers just get into their their labs and they, you know, students can go so much more into depth by being in classes for longer periods of time. Go ahead, please. 
Um, and the, another night, another um, unique thing about Foothill is that we also have a project based integrated approach. So students aren't just sitting at a desk reading books and writing papers and, and you know, paper and pencil. Um, we have uh, our teachers are, you know, creating, you know, hands on projects or uh, action based projects across the disciplines, whether it's uh, social science, uh, English, science, math, they are, you know, students are actively engaged at all times. Um, and it builds relevancy for students, you know, and it increases their learning. So it's not just sit at a desk and listen to a teacher teach, they're hands on actively engaged and it definitely shows with our uh, student engagement. I know that as, as you're in the position that you're in, you're thinking about where do I want to send my child next year? Your ultimate goal is really to get a feel for the school. And that is especially hard during a time of COVID. So uh, some tools I, I share with you are the, both our website and our student newspaper, because it is one of the closest ways we can give you access to what we're doing at Foothill. Uh, I would encourage you to check both of those out. We have some amazing pieces of technology. It's in the, it's in the name, so we have a little advantage there, but we utilize that technology really well. The student newspaper is, is award-winning, um, nationally recognized, um, created completely by our students with the help of a very skilled teacher and advisor. And they document a lot of things from their favorite foods to what's going on with our sports. Um, it, they've got diverse offerings and you can see things from the past as well when we were in person and it, it gives you a great feeling. Oh, babe. Additionally, uh, I would encourage you to take a look at our website because there's a great depth of information there on our special programs in regards to our curriculum and in regards to our staff. So I encourage you to look at both of those tools. Um, I joke that we have been using technology before it was cool in a pandemic because uh, our teachers are skilled in, in the use of using those tools and they are skilled in integrating technology into their, into their universe. It's something that we've been, we, we've been doing for years. Um, when I was in the classroom at Foothill 19 years ago, I had a website that you could take the course online from and we did podcasts, which was revolutionary then. Uh, and we have only grown since then. So we have amazing tools that support our teachers and our students in learning in regards to technology, but especially helpful to help you get a feel for the school. Uh, this year, I would encourage you to, to take a look at those two resources. Next, Mr. Gibbs. I think what we're probably most proud of here is the opportunities that we create for our students. When I came onto the job, I said I wanted every student to have not only the opportunity to change who they are and where they live, um, like what surrounds them, but also had the opportunity to change the world. And really every teacher believes in that here. Um, they have every opportunity to do that through our ASB program, um, you know, our speech and debate program, journalism, all of our CTE programs. Uh, we just offer a plethora of opportunities because that's what we know serves kids best. Um, in our electives, we have our health sciences, we have um, fine and performing arts, our world language program, um, three of the probably most like dedicated people I've seen to education that I've worked with in my 15 years of this. Um, you know, we have our ethnic and social justice classes with two of probably the most dedicated teachers I've ever seen to that. Um, really, they want your child to understand the, the world that we live in now and they're challenged every day in that class. Um, we have our robust AP uh, program as well, as well as our athletics program. If uh, you really want to know more, more about our athletics, we'll definitely have more on the 27th. Our athletic director, Coach Brown, will be there to outline all the good stuff going on. But uh, we are trying to make every opportunity for athletics to open with the pandemic going on. And, the, you know, as soon as we can have kids back for something more than conditioning, we will. Um, but we are looking forward to restarting next year uh, better than ever. You know, we've had nothing but time to think about how to make things better in this time and how to create more opportunities for students. And that's what we're really about here. So know that if your child does come here, we try to make every opportunity available for them to be who they want to be and to go where they want to go. Yeah, with, uh, with that being said, hopefully you like what you heard tonight. Uh, obviously, we're going to take your questions here at the end. But if you want a more detailed presentation, mark on your calendar January 27th at 6 p.m. We'll have a webinar. And from there, you'll get an expansive presentation on our programs here, our athletic program, and our day-to-day -day life of students here. Uh, in the meantime, go to our website and check us out. I put in the chat, too, a link to our CTE program description that's provided by the district. Uh, and we'll have the link to this webinar on our website as well. And Ms. Kiros will also send it out through Parent Square. It will also be on our district website as well. So plenty of places to find it. We're looking forward to seeing you there.
So looking forward, we got 15 or actually 16 minutes left. Looking forward to taking all your questions. You're more than welcome to either put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself as well and ask away. You're also welcome. If you heard everything you needed to hear, you're also more than welcome to go enjoy your evening. While we're waiting for some questions to come in, there were a couple of questions that came up in our last session that were great, great questions that I, I would love to share with you here. There were some questions about participating in programs at other schools. Um, in regards to athletics, students are not allowed to participate in any athletics at any other school other than our own. Foothill offers all of the sports that the other two high schools, Boyne and Ventura do, with the exception of wrestling and football. Um, but students are not allowed to participate in athletics at any other site. Uh, they're, they are able to participate in band, but at their home school. So if your family lives in Buena's boundary, your child may participate in band at Buena High School only. So coming to Foothill does not allow you to participate in band at, at the other school. Um, band, we probably have maybe 10 to 15 kids that participate in band. It can be a bit tricky with scheduling. There needs to be space at the Boundary High School to participate in it, but we do have 10 to 15 students at both high schools participating in band and the music program. Yeah, um, for band tutoring the, options, sorry, we, um, so we, we actually have a lot right now. One, teachers do have office hours, and if you don't know what the teacher office hours are, assume your student is going here now. Uh, they just need to email their teacher, but teachers do offer office hours. Uh, we do have after school tutoring. Um, right now it's virtual. Uh, we have it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we also have small groups uh, right now um, for, for struggling students. Uh, Mr. Gibbs, I saw that uh, Ms. Kiros actually just entered, so Wonderful. don't want to put her on the spot, but just wanted to welcome her. Thank you We'd for We'd love to put us. our fellow co-workers on the spot, so Ms. Kittles, <laughs> if you're there, if you want to say hi, you're more than welcome to. If not, you're here. You're welcome to ask a question. Oh, good. I'm glad she's just here to enjoy the show. Well done. Um, <laughs> yes, we do have an AVID program here, and we are a uh, national model program here as well. Um, what's cool about our program is we align it so all, all of the class periods meet at the same time so they can do activities and bonding together as a program before um, it had like one of the one of the grade levels had to be scheduled out so it was on its own but now they're all together and we plan on keeping it that way uh, for as long as we can so they can all all, all grow together as a group uh, but yeah we do have a very very well run avid program that we're all very proud of one shout out for the 27th we will have students present on the 27th our asb president will be there to address anyone who's interested and our asb some of our asb students will also be preparing a tour because that's something we we really like to share with our families and this changing environment makes that challenging so we will have both of those opportunities at uh, the evening on the 27th so i encourage you to come because our our students are our neatest and most significant voices Yes, so there's a question in the chat regarding French as an elective. Um, yes, because uh, we are a small school, we only currently offer Spanish. Um, so if you do take French or another language through uh, the community college, that will count. Um, uh, foreign or world language is not a graduation requirement currently, but it is a college prerequisite. So um, you would not need a language class in order to graduate, but if you wanted to go on to a four-year university, um, you would need that, and that would fulfill that requirement if you took it through uh, Ventura College. Um, in do, go ahead, Katie. That's all you. Thanks. In regards to special education, we do accept students who have IEPs, of course. Um, my best recommendation is to speak with your child's current case manager because special ed needs are so diverse and so different depending on the child. And the, the person who best knows your child is your student's case manager. 
uh, so they understand what your student strengths are and what areas they need to work on. So I would speak with them about possibilities um, for Foothill, or I would say, give me a call or an email. I would I oversee special ed at Foothill, and I would be happy to touch base with you um, about our programs. But we do have a special ed program and an SAI program um, for students who have IEPs, along with a study skills program. Don't be shy, folks. Test our knowledge. Play, see if you can stump the administrators and questions if need be. Absolutely. So in terms of performing arts, um, we have we our programs are more limited, but we do have a drama program. So our drama program does do a production, although they were very disappointed. It was scheduled for the this last spring, um, but they usually have one production per year and um, we offer drama one, two and three. It's differentiated within that one period. But we do have a drama program with um, an exceptional teacher, Mrs. Jennifer Kindred. Um, there was a question in the chat. We got, yes, we do have water polo. Um, and as far as the acceptance rate goes, so typically we accept about 300 students um, in the ninth grade. Uh, and then uh, based on that, if there are students that uh, choose not to come to Foothill and there are spaces, then they will notify us. The district office will notify us. Um, and uh, then, and then they will notify us and then we will accept people off the uh, wait list, but typically it's about 300 um, is the uh, acceptance. Um, and also there was a question in the chat regarding the AVID program that we have. If your uh, student is currently in the AVID program in middle school, um, our AVID, uh, I believe it's on the 27th, we are going to have an AVID information evening um, for the middle schools. And if your son or daughter is currently in AVID in middle school, they will need to apply um, again for high school. Uh, but once they are in AVID in high school, they will not need to apply again. They will continue on in that program with us. So, um, and typically uh, we get, uh, Katie, what would you say about 600 applicants for? 600 applicants for the incoming ninth grade class with approximately 300 accepted. Uh, and water polo, uh, well, when it's not closed, we typically practice at Kimball Park at the aquatic uh, center is where our team practices. Um, and then questions about the new graphics art program. Uh, there is information available on our website and it will be showcased a little bit more thoroughly at our um, school of choice night. So I would highly encourage you to uh, check that out. Um, but it's a, definitely an up and coming program. And uh, can you tell us more about the psychology elective? Uh, Ooh, I would love to talk. Oh, go ahead. Yes. No, you go for I it. I used to please. teach that course. I love it. Um, the psychology elective, it's actually an AP psychology course. So it is a course that is quite rigorous. It does cover a little bit of bio psych. It's not just social psych. So it has some social psychology. It has some abnormal psychology. It has some bio biological psychology. Uh, and it does prepare students to take the AP psychology class or the AP, AP psychology test, which is a test that if a student scores a passing score on, it's a national test. Uh, they can earn college credits for that course. So it is an elective, uh, but it is a rigorous elective and um, not tons of homework, but definitely some course material that, that's challenging appropriately, and they have the potential to earn college credit for it. Ms. Cruz, could you answer the question one came up? How do you work around schedules for kids in competitive club sports? Yes, I was sorry. I was trying to answer a Spanish question. You're doing um, fabulous. <laughs> Um, so how do we get around students that have uh, competitive sports? Um, you know, it, 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 so we do have uh, a couple of different options. We do have uh, ISPE where students, uh, as long as they are uh, approved sports or approved programs, students can actually get credit for participating in their club sports. Um, however, if it is a student that is going to be traveling a lot or is going to be uh, missing school a lot for their competitive sports, um, it may be a conversation worth having um, separately because 
um, with our with the nature of our programs and with the hands on learning that I discussed a little bit earlier, it's really difficult for students to miss a lot of school and be actively engaged. Um, and so, oh, espérate un momentito, por favor. Okay, sorry, I have a toddler um, and she's hungry. <laughs> Um, but uh, for the competitive sports. So that would be something I think if you could call us at school, um, I'd love to be able to chat with you and get more information from you and uh, and hopefully be able to answer that a little bit more thoroughly for you. But it all kind of depends on the demands of the sports and, uh, and the time commitment. There was also a question um, that I'll, I'll address, but then everyone else is more welcome to address too. What's the difference between Foothill and Ventura High? Well, one is the size. We're, we, we have about 1,000 students here. Ventura has about 2,200. We also have a block schedule, uh, alternating block, where students will have an hour and a half class. Um, where Ventura, they have a seven period day, but it's also, but the students traditionally take five. They'll start either like a zero through seven or a um, like one through eight. We also have seven periods here. Our freshmen take seven classes as well, and that doesn't happen at Ventura. Um, our programs also says, apart from Ventura, in terms of we have a bioscience academy, uh, we have a design tech academy. So the, while they also have CTE and very good CTE programs, our, our programs are unique to us as well um, than for Ventura. Our sports are a little bit different. We don't have uh, football or wrestling, but we do have a very uh, robust and successful athletics program. All right. And I think also here, probably one of our largest differences is that our students like choose us one because of our programs and also because of the environment here. It's, I mean, we do in certain ways look like a comprehensive high school, but we are a very close knit community here um, where I would say everyone, everyone pretty much knows each other. Um, and also, I mean, I think we already know about the academic rigor um, and, and the uh, drive that our students have here as well. Well, not that students at Ventura don't have that, but, um, but we do know this is a very high performing school and students come here to highly perform in our particular programs as well. There are other differences as well that Ms. Tedford, Ms. Cruz may outline, no pressure to, but I would say our size, our programs, um, and also that we are a school of choice as well um, are the main differences. And I, I think that finding a school for your child is about finding the right school. Um, I. I, I often tell families, I love Foothill and I'm a Ventura High alumni. And I think that both have amazing things to offer. They have differences, um, they have strengths, they have weaknesses, and it's about finding the right spot for your child. So um, we don't have as many offerings and as many programs as Ventura High or Buena High does because of our size. They are twice as large, they have twice the opportunities for some of the programs. Um, I think one of our gifts is our small school environment, but along with that means we don't have all of the same programs that they do. Uh, it's a, it's a, a drawback, but also but also a gift. So I think that, that that is unique. The small school community does create a very tight um, community and student body. A school of a thousand is more similar to a middle school campus. Um, the longer periods I think are extremely unique. People on our campus say there's a, there's a neat dynamic between your staff and your students. It's almost more collegiate. Um, there's a, a great sense of respect between the students and the staff where our, I think our students know that our staff are doing amazing things for them and and there really is a, is a mutual adoration there for the learning that occurs so I think that sense of community is not to be understated but but also that the the big comprehensive high schools do have some neat things as well so it's really about knowing your child knowing where they will succeed um, what is in their best interest because I have nothing ill to say about the other sites they have some neat things and and we have some neat things so great for you to see the differences and, and evaluate what's what's best for your student that's, I think, one of the reasons why we have School of Choice is because there is a school in the district for every child uh, to meet the needs that they have. And it's all about understanding what your child needs and, and, what, and what they want to succeed. And that's why we have School of Choice. It works out pretty much well for everyone. Uh, for the uh, Ventura College, yes, we have very many students here that are dual enrolled at, at Ventura College. It's a very common thing here and very easy to do. I had one student to sign up for Japanese. Um, of our dual enrollment, which is very cool. I would have, I don't know if I would have done that in high school, but uh, it's very cool that they, they all have options to do that there at BC. And it's very nice it being right across the street. Mr. Gibbs, we actually, I wasn't, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but um, we actually have students that because they are taking college classes currently right now, um, when they graduate from high school, not only will they earn a high school diploma, but we actually have a few students that are on track to also earn their AA degree. 
uh, because they've been taking classes through VC as well. So uh, very few, not many, but we do have some students that do participate and do take classes. Anything we classes. can't do here. Man, this place gets yes. better and better. So, yes. Telling you. <laughs> I was scrolling through the chat. I think we got everything in the chat so far. Not I that I hope so. Welcome. If we didn't, pretty please ask us again. We missed it inadvertently. Uh, uh, we did. Okay, there is a question as far as what programs are unique. Uh, we did go over that. We and and I'm happy to go over it again. So we have an awesome uh, health sciences academy. Uh, we also have a communications pathway, a communications program. Uh, we have a technology program. Uh, we have a new graphic arts program. Uh, we have an amazing DTech program. That's our, our technology program. Uh, but yes, so this, those are some of the programs that we offer and that we have that are unique to Foothill. Katie, anything else that I missed? Well, we, have, we have the education pathway that just started this year as well. Correct. Um, and we you. also have a coding pathway as well that started this year as well. And in regards to athletics, um, one thing that is is a bit unique, um, we are fielding teams that are the same size as the big schools. So uh, for example, a basketball team has you know X amount of players, um, but we're drawing from half the student body. So while well, that has cons as well, but that also means that students have a greater opportunity to participate in high school sports at a smaller school because the teams are, are of the same size. Um, so that increases student opportunity to play on some of those teams. The career pathways actually um, don't work against the courses you would need to take. They'd be in addition to. So if you participate in any of these pathways or programs or, or academies, they would be in addition to things that you'd need for college. So they would fill elective spots. Um, one of the benefits of Foothill being on a seven period day versus a six period day is you have more opportunities to take courses. So if you wanted to do athletics and leadership and bioscience, you have the space in your schedule to do so while still fulfilling the requirements from the university. So it would be um, different than um, a six period day where you'd be limited in what you can take. You can squeeze in more of those extracurricular opportunities and career pathways that way. Mr. Mercado, I am not sure that I understand that question. Could you, uh, you're welcome to unmute too if you wanna talk with us. Um, difference between the tech pathway and the tech pathway. Um, I'm not totally sure. We do have a DTEC pathway, and the, the DTEC pathway uh, stands for design, um, technical, and in entrepreneurship. So it actually has an entrepreneurial component where students have to market things, um, and it uses technology, including um, laser cutters. It uses 3D printers um, and uses technology to, to create something that can then be marketed in an entrepreneurial way. Um, so that is our DTEC Academy, if that's what you were asking about. Ah, thank you for clarifying. Uh, coding and technology. Um, so coding has to do with the programming of the computers and getting code into the computer to get the computer to do something or perform some function or program. Whereas the DTEC Academy, the Design Technology and Entrepreneurial Academy, uses technology to create something that can entrepreneurially be, is that a word? It may not be. Um, <laughs> that it is can now. be um, it is now that can be marketed in some way. So it, students participate in advertising, promoting, meeting with entrepreneurs um, and marketing their product. And they also work with community members too, like that they say, oh, look, I noticed you had this need, look what I could do for you. And they, they design things that some companies don't even know that they need yet. And they sell it to them. They become self-sufficient here on campus, which is very cool. Uh, there was a question in the chat, I'm sorry, between uh, about our bioscience program and uh, whether or not it's still connected to Baxter. Um, and I do know that our bioscience program has a lot of connections um, and is working with several different uh, organizations in the community. I'm uh, Specifically, I'm not sure about Baxter. Uh, Katie or Mr. Gibbs, are you... I'm not certain about Baxter. I'm positive about, I know they're connected with Coastal Marine Bio. I know they are con connected with VCMC and Community Memorial. Uh, I am not certain about Baxter. I know they have connections with Amgen. I know one of our teachers has been employed with Amgen. And so I'm not certain about Baxter at this point in time, but I know that our bioscience director would know that right off the top yeah, of our head. I've never heard of Baxter connection 
as of recently, but it doesn't mean that there wasn't one in the past or that they found a better partner to work with instead of Baxter. If you come on our um, on our specific student information or uh, school information night, I'm sure we could get that answered for you with our director of our bioscience program for sure. Um, but nevertheless, all of our CTE program CTE programs have solid um, connections out there to other businesses. Otherwise, they wouldn't be an academy. All right. Well, it's seven thirty four. I think we got all the questions answered, but I want to thank everyone again. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you heard what you needed to hear and hopefully you're interested again for seeing us on the 27th. Uh, but please email us or call us if you have any questions or concerns or check out our website. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll see you again on the 27th. And thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Have a great rest of the night, everyone. Take care.